Ania Radzewska i ja hope that I will uh, honorably replace Ellen Hamso who has been co conducting you and who was your online guide for those two last days. Now he's on the way to Luxembourg, but I'm with uh, two other brilliant gentlemen that actually have just finished a session. Um, before the title of the session and the objective of the session, um, the names of the people who are responsible for the session. So Ruth Janssen, I think you, uh, you may give, uh, you, you may give the, the, your description of what... Of the, the session. First of all, of what you are doing, because what I noted is that you want to be called digital strategist and nomad, which is very interesting in uh, in context of social media. But maybe we will just stuck on, uh, stick to this. And Andreas Diesenreiter, who is creative director at uh, European Society of Radiology. Good afternoon. Good and um, as I said, we've just left the session that. Uh, to uh, these two brilliant gentlemen organized. The title of this session was actually quite complicated. I will try to be as, um, as calm as possible right, while reading it. So, live autopsy dissecting user-generated content at association conferences. And happily, we were already explained at the very beginning what was the objective of, the, of this session. So the question that we were about to answer during uh, two hours of this session was, does user-generated content may create value for all event stakeholders? Yes, no, if yes, for whom and how? And um, I think I will pass, uh, I will pass the, the explanation of the whole concept of the meeting, of the session, to, uh, to my guests, and I will think I, I think I will ask first of all Andreas, who was the author or co-author of the the project that we were actually trying to get closer to, and we were trying to, um, to we were trying to to think about during the the session. So, what was why actually you've come up with this concept of this this kind of action, this kind of activities, and uh, why it's now interesting so far that we've been working on, on that for last two hours. Do you mean me being rolled in as a corpse or do you mean the projects I had? Uh, I mean about the project. I mean about the, the, the project. The project that was uh, so much involving uh, users. Mm -hmm. So attendees. In, so in your, uh, in your case it was a meeting, it was a conference, uh, it was uh, International Radiology Congress. No, I, yeah. I mixed somehow the, the name. The European Congress of yeah. Radiology. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Let's, let's, yeah, and, 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 if we, and if we frame the discussion, um, we're at the end of a two-day conference, and one of the discussions and, and, and the design that we were thinking about is we're talking about user-generated content. Let's frame the session using user-generated user content. Let's make sure some of yeah. the content actually comes from the users and we live what we describe and we dissect the success and some successful failures of an event that was just past month in Vienna. Mm -hmm. Right, Andreas? So maybe you can describe how we kind of came up with the concept and what we did within the session. <laughs> um, well, one of the interesting things for me was that you wanted to do an open session. So I wanted to have, what, what were you calling it? The thing for all people? The ah, yes. When you, when you have a hard time walking, PowerPoint is very often like a support <coughs> system for speakers. Yeah. To, uh, to hang on to. And I wanted to have like a PowerPoint presentation where I can hang on presenting all my projects, but Ruth convinced me about doing the whole session. Well, more interactive. Yeah. More yeah? Interactive. So we just chose like seven projects I thought that are interesting for the others to, to see. Some of them worked very well, some of them who, well, didn't work out. They have like a mixture of, of, of projects. And then we posted them and asked people which projects do you want to see and learn more about. We did that with pictures. Maybe I show some of them. Yeah. So it examples. was pinned to it. So generally, all of those projects were social or social media actions around the Congress. It's European Radiolo 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 uh, Radiology con uh, yeah. Congress. More so, or less, yeah. Okay. So what? Because I was one of the attendees, so I may also see it from attendee perspective. So we've seen all of those pictures. We we were about to choose them. Yeah. What we want to talk about. What was uh, interesting for us. And actually, we were we you invited us to talk over those projects 
why they were successful or not, why, and what was the most interest, what was interesting for us, and what we can implement in our actions. Correct. So why actually do have you chosen this kind of format to talk over this kind of uh, project? I mean, there is some, there is some link. I have to, I have to admit that when we have, would have done it with PowerPoints, I wouldn't have found out that this is what people interested the most because I would definitely would have thought that well probably he would have won but well it seems that the word game is enough to get people's attention because it's about the gaming yeah. and the winning yes. people want to win yes, probably. so just just to kind of frame it what what we did is we replicated uh, literally something that people recognize um, and this was user-generated content from another conference where uh, some good colleagues of mine uh, Eric de Groot, uh, designed a session where we dissected the meeting owner. And this kind of inspired when we're talking about a medical conference, how do we dissect the user-generated content at an event that was just held, and how do you determine whether it delivered value for the stakeholder, yes or no, right? And what do scientists do? They make a hypothesis and they prove it, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. So we took the scientific approach to seeing whether something that's very crowd owned, right? People create their own user generated content with videos and photos and all sorts of things. And Actually you, you use this radiological yes. attitude. Yes. <laughs> you so, just want to try so we, so we so we go into the mode of what what is what is common uh, common place of care for, for the audience here. And because people in the associations world that is the audience here uh, uh, very often have to do with academic environments. Yeah. Uh, that's the reason why we chose this hypothesis and literally had uh, the patient be carried in or be driven in, actually. Which, which was Andreas, so like two which, hours uh, ago, which he was, was on the which table. Which was inspired line. by this design session that, uh, that Eric designed back at the Fresh Conference in Copenhagen, which was very interesting because it, it creates this tension in the room, this common place where people kind of figure out, okay, um, we are in different it's, settings, it's different. something I have to different. think different, something's different, there's paper all over the tables, we have different components, we have to do something, it's not just sitting back and consuming a PowerPoint. Um, this is the last session, right? We were standing between the beautiful ocean in the back here and um, and the actual content delivery. And right? try to grab the attention. And I think this is, this is exactly what we did. We said yeah. apply the live autopsy principle to this con uh, concept. Uh, people chose which projects they wanted to do, so these were put on the table of the dissection, and uh, they chose which ones they thought were the most important ones, just by looking at a picture. Right? That's so all they saw. So it was another element of user-generated content. Absolutely. This, is, this was which our had a, input. Which had a different outcome from Andreas's expectation, maybe. And uh, I think this is Completely. typically, typically what you experience. I think when people, when you allow others to to give components of the decision, right, on the direction, um, then you can physically, you know, from that component, you can, you can, you can create the program and change the program as you go along. Throughout, yes. yeah. Throughout the and we started ten minutes early. My mistake. I thought we had to start at, uh, and and then we did a quick rewind because this is a linear process in this meeting. What yeah. we did is we mapped out on a timeline, on one wall, we put up the timeline of three years with months, and as we went through the cases, we were talking about and taking notes on post-its and pasting. When did you take the decision? When did the idea come up? How did it materialize? And kind of dissect every component in that way, which would be an analytical state of mind, right? And Benita Lips, who was uh, our chair for the session, pointed out that this is the type of qualitative research uh, that, that we were conducting on this particular event with some of the creators on the inside and yeah. some of the people on the outside uh, that observe it and then come up with new ideas and convert it to ideas for yourself. Yeah. And then at the end we did a lineup, whether we agreed or disagreed with the hypothesis, and then interviewed the people that were standing on one extreme and the other extreme to see what the learnings were. So I will ask you already what were yes. the results, as I wasn't there, so it will be a... A video has just been posted on Twitter, so if you look at the Twitter, uh, uh, Twitter hashtag ACIE13, you will see some of the commentaries of people that were just there. Okay. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating. Um, I think... Um, when the definition of a, has a scientific approach, in this case, the word all was our struggling point, and that's the reason why we put it in, user-generated content creates value for all stakeholders, right? And we emphasize the word all. That is not something you can prove absolutely just from 70 minutes of interactive 
discussions and very... Uh, With even the most professional people possible to find at one place. And in, in, in practice, the whole exercise is done to get people to think and empathize with the situation and think about this problem from, the, yeah. from their own perspective. Um, another ingredient we drew into this was we had so much content, sometimes you need to think about something completely different. Yeah. And um, we brought in some chocolates from various places in the world and uh, little papers were put into matryoshka dolls um, and all these different components had a way of distracting people to think about something completely different. It's a palate cleanser to cleanse your mind and literally think about something different so you're ready and receptive for the next piece of content. So you wanted to, to feed us, but happily not with sugar. So our attention, our span attention was still with you. a little bit here. of sugar, but most of it is just, orange just, and chocolate with cocoa on the inside. And it's yes. pure. It's very <laughs> pure. This is a product only chocolatiers can procure and buy. It's still a very rough product, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're analyzing rough content. Yeah. Um, yet people, you know, chocolate is usually a food group for most people. It's also something that uh, usually in large groups of people, there's very few that dislike chocolate. Uh, you were asking before, why not mint or a drink or something different? Um, because was, it's hard I to find a product that everybody really likes and, and is looking forward to the next one. Chocolate uh, does the trick every time. Yes, yes. Can um, we please have milk chocolate next time? More chocolate. Milk, milk. chocolate. Milk chocolate, yes. yes. So the other component was people have different preferences in chocolates. And then you demonstrate the fact that tastes are not the same, right? You may like this chocolate, somebody else may like that one. So you cannot talk about all, you may talk about minority majority, but you cannot satisfy everybody. Yes. If you blend all the tastes together, you get something reasonably mediocre. What you have to do is try and test extremities, right? You try things that are, you know, that some may like, others may dislike, but that's the way things go. How did you find, actually it's a, a bit far question, but did you find our us distracted by the chocolate? I mean, from you your were a participant. Let, let us ask you. Uh, I was searching for a, a second, uh, second bottom, and I was like, even asking, okay, why are we actually eating this chocolate? And I was like, okay, okay I, what's the context between Austria, Vienna, and chocolate? I, I, I was missing Mozart balls, <laughs> but uh, so now I'm happy that you revealed it. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe you left it for our uh, thinking afterwards. I think uh, a good story always leaves you thinking, right? Uh, if you resolve all the problems at the end, um, or halfway, too obvious then it may too be become too obvious. Yes. The imagination needs something to, uh, to, to bring along. Um, the other thing we ran into was maybe interesting was we asked for permission to extend with another 10 minutes. And then you said, no, 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 no. And Cannot be. <laughs> and now I actually ask whether we can uh, stay a bit longer. To, uh, just a little bit, okay, so because I would like to wrap up actually what we have been doing for the last two days and I think you are one of the mo uh, most appropriate people uh, to talk about it because uh, very like hybrid events and uh, this uh, content not only consumed by, by attendees but also generated by attendees and searching for their feedback before, after, throughout the conference actually is, is, uh, is highlighted more and more because people see that actually you cannot create something for people without them. Yes. So my question is, um, like, what, what are your thoughts? In which direction is it going? Like, in which setting you think that we may uh, meet next year at Association Congress? Is it some, yeah, is it I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the following, it's maybe not fair, but I'm going to bounce the ball through to Andreas, who's visited this conference for the first time. Thank you, and, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to put, put him on the spot briefly, because I think getting um, the fresh perspective of somebody that is in an association environment, in a specific creative role. Um, and not in event environment, or not, like, not directly event, like throughout the, the association. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So how, do you, how do you perceive this event and what's the direction that you see going? How, what's its relevance to you? Safety question is what I think, the, how the event will change for next year. I probably have sad news because my opinion is that it probably will be nearly the same because especially in social media, I mean that's something that's going on now for several years now yeah. and it's evolving very slowly. Okay. From, from my perspective. So it's a slow organic yeah. growth. Too change. slow, not, not slow enough. Or it's just um, statement. It's slow. It's, it's it has two two ways of going. It, on the one side, it's moving very quickly. I mean, it's how it's developing. 
like for example, if you watch just Facebook and how, um, the features Facebook integrates constantly, and the redesigns Facebook has. So that's moving very quickly. But on the other side, we have this very slow pace in the conference and Congress business and the adaption of users. Mm -hmm. So there's a very different speeds. Well, and we have to manage to kind of digest them at, at once and mix them and have the best product possible yeah. at the time. Given and when, the, the, when the slower group is catching up, the other one is already again, far, away. far away. And then we still have to again reconfigure, refigure what, what to use for the slower group again. So that's but something to be looking forward to. And with this statement, we are going to say goodbye. Thank you for being with us. Unfortunately, and we you can will have not some chocolates, and, and we do apologize we if you're just looking at us from the outside. We share with you virtually from Costa Rica, Peru, and uh, Uganda. Yes. And yes. Um, so uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, in, on behalf of Ellen and on behalf of me, uh, see you next year. <laughs>